What's going on everybody and welcome to part three of our deep learning and how I and part six of our just overall how I tutorial series. In this tutorial, what we're going to be doing is training a model on the uh, the training data basically that we've been building. I'm, I'm just going to keep letting this run in the background. Actually, it's like this plus 40. I stopped it and then I was like, oh, I probably should just keep it running. Uh, while I write the training code. So we'll just keep it going. So I almost actually have 100. We'll definitely be over 100 by the time we're done. So uh, with that, let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to call this model trainer. So I'm just going to copy data creator.py, call it model trainer.py, edit it, and fit that on our screen. Cool. All right. So what we're going to need to basically what you're going to need to have here is going to be both TensorFlow and Keras. Um, you could just do pip install TensorFlow and pip install Keras in your command line. Uh, but TensorFlow, you probably really want to have the GPU version. So it should be TensorFlow dash GPU. And in order to do that, it can be kind of tedious to install. So if you need help installing the GPU version of TensorFlow on both Windows or Linux, uh, go to the text-based version of the tutorial. I've linked to both options in that text-based tutorial. It'll be in the there's a link in the description to the text-based tutorial. So head there if you need any help. Um, I'm also using uh, TQDM, so pip install TQDM. You you don't need this. Uh, I'd like to use TQDM anytime I've got a large for loop that I'm curious how much longer it might be. Um, but by no means you do you need it. So anyway, uh, but grab it if you want. So to begin, um, I am going to, I think I'm just gonna keep doing what I was doing before. I think that, I think it's just more useful when we've got so much data and so much code to cover uh, to do it this way. So let me just, I'm just gonna copy this over. So import Keras, cause we're gonna use it. Model sequential, that's just for your multi-layer perceptron feed forward type model. Uh, we want dense layers, we want dropout, which drop out activation at that point also if you want to learn more about deep learning uh, in both Python and just deep learning in general I've also got links to tutorials there as well if, if you need uh, more information on that so anyway uh, that's that uh, load model so we can save and load models if we want uh, random for shuffling our data TQDM for like I said it's for iterating over models uh, I'm sorry iterate <laughs> Uh, it's for producing uh, like progress bars basically for anything you're going to iterate over and then numpy uh, for obvious reasons so continuing along um, we're gonna have a batch size this is just how much how much of a batch are we gonna feed through the neural network at a time I'm gonna go with 128 I found the 128 to be like the sweet spot so 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 I'm gonna go with that epic or epoch says everybody likes to correct me uh, we'll go with 10 somewhere between like 1 and 10 um, it just kind of depends I wouldn't I haven't really found any benefit to going over 10 but you can if you want feel free to play with all, all this stuff and then test size how much of our data do we want to dedicate to out of sample testing now I'm going to go ahead and do is create in model and out model. Again, I'm going to copy and paste this one. This one to take a little bit to write. I'd rather just explain it. Um, basically, this is just going to tell us what is our batch size and how many epochs did we do. So it's going to save these models. Now, uh, we don't have an input model to start with, so I'm just passing 0, 0 there. Um, but if you had one that you wanted to continue, basically, you know, you might, you're going to find that there's times where you train a model and then maybe you get some more data or you get some new data and either you want to train it on a larger data set or you want to uh, like you want to combine your new data with your old data train a couple epochs there or maybe you've got pure new data that you just kind of want to throw at it uh, there's all sorts of reasons why you'd want to input a saved model um, but anyway now what we're going to do is if we did have a model uh, we'll load it so i'm going to say load previous model will be false but if we want to load a model, then we'll load in that model. What's really cool about Keras, uh, I haven't actually covered Keras on my channel, so if you're on my channel uh, and you haven't used Keras yet, one really nice thing about Keras over TensorFlow in general, uh, as well as TFLearn, which is what I usually use in place of Keras, is you don't, if you load a model, you don't have to define the model, <laughs> which is really nice. <laughs> I always thought that was really dumb that 
you had to define the model and then load it um, if you saved the model. It just seemed like, why can't we just save the model? Maybe that's something new with TensorFlow like 1.4 or something like that that I just haven't experienced yet or something. But at least Keras does that, and I think that's great. So continuing along, um, now let's go ahead and read in the data. So again, I'm just going to copy and paste this. So here we're just opening the train file. We split by new line. Uh, and then uh, we're gonna eval this stuff. So one option we could have done rather than appending to the file is like save it as some sort of NumPy file or something like that. But when we're just saving it as this file, it's the format is a string. So we need to use eval i um, because it needs to be evaluated for what it is, not be a string. So this basically converts it to, to actual data, not string. Anyway, that's our input, that's our output. Now we need to discuss balancing. So with, with all machine learning, but deep learning too, um, you want to have balanced data. So in our case, we have three choices. We have attack, mine our own planets, mine an empty planet. Chances are, aside from the initial part of the game, chances are the most common actual output vector is attack because most of the game, you're gonna wind up with all the planets are occupado, and now you just need to attack. And so it's probably gonna be the case that like 75% of our data is attack, 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 attack. And the problem is, there's two, two major issues. One, it's hard to assess how accurate you are if you have unbalanced data, but it's also hard to train a model with unbalanced data, because the model is gonna learn like, let's see, um, you know, I can be 75% accurate if I always say attack, because that's what the model is going to try to do. It's going to try to figure out what's the quickest way to get to the best answer. And so it's going to just, if 75% if of your data, let's say, is attack, it's going to very quickly learn, okay, I just should always attack. I should, I'll be the most accurate. So we want to make sure our data is perfectly balanced um, for that reason, but also when it comes time to evaluate our model and how accurate the model actually is, if your data isn't balanced, it's really hard to determine are we this accurate because we're always predicting attack or we're most often predicting attack because the model incorrectly just learned to just in general predict attack or is it actually smart? So it's really hard to determine how you've actually done if you don't have balanced data. So there's two reasons why we want to do it. So what I'm going to do now is just put in this code for the balancing. So we have these lists that are attack mine and mine empty planet. There's got to be a better way to do it than this, but this is the way I've done it. So, so basically what we're going to do is if the output layer is attack, we add it to attack. If it's, you know, mine our own planets, we add it to mine our own planets. And if it is uh, mine an empty planet, we append it there. And then what I want to go ahead and do is like for now, what we can do is we can just print this. Uh, we can just print it out so we can see the length, see what we're starting with. And then what we want to do is grab whatever the shortest one is. So we want to know what is the shortest length thing. I'm going to wager it's probably mine empty planet, but that's okay. Then what we want to do is we're going to shuffle all of those lists. Man, my throat is so dry. And so we want to shuffle them for a variety of reasons, but mostly we just, chances are if we don't, sh like, at least shuffling at this stage isn't as important as shuffling the next stage. But in general, you just don't want data necessarily to be in succession unless you want your data to be in succession. Like if we were doing like a, a recurrent neural network or something, it would be great if the data was in succession, but we don't actually really want it to be in succession here. So we're gonna go ahead and shuffle that. And then now we're gonna make all of the data the length of whatever the shortest is. I don't know if I've got allergies today or what. My eyes are itchy, my nose is itchy, my throat is dry. Okay, so now, once we've done that, let's print the new lengths. So now we get the lengths. These should all be identical in length now. And now we want to add these all up together. So we're going to say now all choices are just attack plus mine plus mine our planets plus mine empty planets. And then we want to shuffle them. So here it's super important that we shuffle. <laughs> Otherwise, the model, as we feed it data, the mod and probably the testing data, for example, would only be like an empty planet always <laughs> but then also um for here it would be really hard for the model because like the first 
large sum of data would be all attack, attack, attack. So the model would very quickly learn, okay, attack. And then it would shift over to this chunk of data. It would be all mine our planet, mine our planet. And then it would be like, oh, shoot. And it would shift over to always mine our planet. And then it would get to mine empty planet and so on. And uh, that wouldn't be ideal uh, for learning. So we want, definitely want to shuffle them. And random shuffles in place. So this should be fine. Okay. Now, once we've shuffled that data, we need to parse it back to train in and train out information. So we're just going to iterate over. And again, I think I used it up here too. So up here, I use TQDM. So from TQDM, import TQDM. And then I just use TQDM over this enumerate train in. If you don't have to, you could just remove the TQDM encasing there. And you'd be fine if you don't want to use TQDM. I just really like TQDM. <laughs> so anyway, yeah. So now um, we've appended it. And then, so we don't have to do this every time. Like if you haven't made new data, um, you don't need to do this every time. So we're going to go ahead and save it to train in and train out. And then to load it back in, you would just do np.load, train in, train out. And then what we're going to do is split the data to training and testing. Boom. And then we build the model. So because it's Keras and it's awesome, if not load previous model, then we need to build the model and define it. But again, if you have that model and you load it, you don't have to do this. It's great. It's just great. So in this case, we've got a 2 by 256 hidden layer model, 50% uh, dropout. And that's about it. So you can you can feel free to tweak a lot of this stuff. I'm, this, I'm just throwing a bunch of information at you. There's so many variables in both the starting script that does the random stuff uh, there's so many things that we could change there and tweak to make things better. Uh, and then obviously in the neural network model, there's a bunch of things we could tweak. You could tweak the layers, uh, layer size. You could tweak the dropout, how many layers we have. You could treat, uh, change the activation layer here. You could change, I probably would never change that activation layer, but you can feel free to change these activation layers, uh, and all that. And again, just like before, if you, um, if you don't know much about deep learning, I highly encourage it uh, that you, you can go to pythonprogramming.net. Um, either come over here if it's small or there should be a search bar right at the top. And you can probably just type in deep learning. Boom. Um, you can definitely check out this. this well, you can't see it. This, this series here, which is the full machine learning series, which covers basically all the machine learning um, Classifiers, well, not all, but a large amount, not just deep learning. And basically that was kind of structured with the idea of we go over the classifier, show like a practical example, and then we code that classifier ourselves from scratch. And it just, at least for me, but I think for a lot of people, it helps to, to really solidify how this stuff works. But if you want to start with just deep learning, you could just go here, the introduction to deep learning with TensorFlow. Um, and yeah, you can uh, go through this if you, if, if you want to learn more about it. If you already know about it, good for you. So... Uh, back to what I was doing now. I left my page on amateur. Oh, uh, yeah. Once we've built the model, we're ready to fit the model. Now, this would be outside of that load previous model because we actually want to train. So, to fit, you pass the training data, batch size, how many epochs you want to do, verbose. Uh, that has to do with TensorBoard. I'm not going to get into TensorBoard here, but if you want to learn more about TensorBoard, um, go to the deep learning series. Uh, and then the validation split, this is going to be a 10% split. So as it's training, it's going to output some accuracy for you, but that accuracy is going to be based on a portion of the training data. So in theory, that's in sample accuracy. And, you know, you take that with a grain of salt. <clears throat> so what we really want to know is the out of sample accuracy. So to generate that, we're going to say score equals model that evaluate on the testing data. Now, it's a good idea to keep this as a value of something. Because if this validation accuracy does not line up to the score, so the the out of so if the in sample accuracy um, is much higher than the out of sample accuracy, chances are you've overfit. Um, so it's good to actually track both because it's a good indicator of when you've done too many epochs. Um, but yeah, so we'll keep that around. And then we'll go ahead and save the model just in case we want to load it later says where it's saved to. Tell us the test score. Tell us the test accuracy. So um, so this is going to return both a score and an accuracy. Uh, for the life of me, I can't remember what this... I want to say the score is like some... I'm not even... I'm, 
you'll have to look up what score is. Maybe I'll look it up real quick. I can't. It has like some sort of special meaning to it, but I just I forget what it was. Karis score. I think it's Karis test score. I can't remember what it means. Because uh, one of them's it's not it's not like a percentage accuracy. So score is the evaluation of the loss function for a given input. I'll let you do more research if you want. Um, I've never done any use of that, so I've never really paid much attention to that. Okay, so at this point, I've got about 200 games done. So I'm gonna save this, I'm gonna break uh, the, the trainer. So yeah, as you can see, hopefully these are about 50-50. Yeah, pretty close. Okay, um, and now we've got the, the, the model trainer. Let's go ahead and see if we can actually train a model. So, Python model trainer.py. Oh, this might do 3.6. I'm not sure if I've got TQDM on 3. I do, apparently. <laughs> so, this is why TQDM is wonderful. Look at this beautiful loading bar. How could you not love it? So we have 192,000 samples, but once we balance, it should change quite a bit. <laughs> okay. So yeah, as you can see, attack is 166,000, and then the other two is 12,000 and 13,000. So then once we balance it, all three are 12,253. Uh, and then coming down, we go ahead and run. As we can see, we got an accuracy of 57.91 at the very end. Uh, and then the test accuracy was actually higher than that at 61%. So that's good. If the test, if the out of sample is better than the in sample, you're doing good. Okay. So uh, with that, uh, first let's talk about this really quick. So 45% accuracy on the first epoch. What's random? So we have three choices. Random would be 33.333 repeating. Um, so actually, even after the first epoch, we're better than random. Um, but by, by the last one, we're almost at, you know, two thirds, which is pretty darn good for three choices. Uh, obviously, we'd like to better the more the merrier, um, but that's actually not that bad. Um, so anyway, now we've got a model that at least for the winner input and outputs, uh, we're about 61% accurate, especially considering how similar mine empty planet versus mine our own planet is. Not bad. We probably should have gone more, at least in this case, with a binary choice. Um, another good choice to make would be uh, a flea mechanic. So, you know, attack, mine, and flee are probably th a better three choices. So f by flee, I mean run from the enemy. So a really good mechanic to waste your enemy's time and resources, basically, because a ship itself is resources, because that ship could either be attacking and depleting some other enemy, or it could be mining. So it's really important like if you've got two ships chasing one ship like two enemies chasing your one ship or more um it's in your best interest to flee and waste that resource <laughs> right so anyway just an idea so now what we're going to do is take this model how do we take this model and um and run it on halite so that's what we're going to do in the next tutorial is what do we need to do to upload this to Halite? There's a few changes and tweaks we need to make to the script um, in terms of using the model. And then there's also some tiny things that we need to do. The other thing too is we should probably run it locally just to see if it works. But anyway, that's what we're going to do in the next tutorial. If you've got questions, comments, concerns, whatever, feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next tutorial.